Hello and welcome to the next year's webinar series 2021. This is our first webinar in uh, the period that the 2021, obviously, but also the first webinar that next year's is organizing after the end of the Horizon 2020 project. My name is Bentili Liabi. I'm going to be your host as usual. And with me, I have a panel of next year's experts that you will learn more about if you don't know them already. Uh, I know that we have many of our friends in the Earth Observation community here. So welcome to you. Welcome to all the new ones as well. Uh, before we start, uh, we will do a tour de table so with a weather report so that people can get on. Can I get my, uh, my presenters live and kicking, please, in the screens? And here you see them. And before you will learn more about them, you will learn what the weather is like. And while you are listening to the wonderful weather reports that we get from them, we want to hear what the weather is like, where you are and where you are. So let's start. Nuno, can you tell us where you are and what the weather is like right now? You turn off the mic. <laughs> the Hello? <opposite> yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So I'm Nuno Catrino. I'm based in in Lisbon. I was the project coordinator for uh, for next years. Um, the weather here is quite cloudy but actually it doesn't matter because we're locked in locked in so everyone is at home uh, um, so i'll be talking about the next year's catalog and uh, I'll, I'll, what it can do for you yes lovely okay alight hello everyone i'm alight i'm from barcelona or close to barcelona and here we have a quite uh, soft weather even being january so not very bad lately these days sunny and warm so the snow has disappeared? We haven't had snow at all. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> almost had snow in yeah. Barcelona. <laughs> yes. Not in Barcelona, exactly. <laughs> OK, um, we are going to Paris, I believe, Hervé. You're muted, Hervé. Still muted. <laughs> ah, the Bluetooth. <laughs> Okay, you can come in and out again if you want to uh, get the sound working and then we can hear, yeah, we can, we still don't hear you. So, Anastis, let's go to you while uh, Hervé is fixing his yeah, problem. Well, good morning, uh, all. Um, uh, my name is Anastri Pichidis. I'm Research Associate and Project Manager in National Observatory of Athens. So today in Athens, the weather is uh, really shiny, uh, but with uh, low temperatures. And with the weather forecast for today is that the uh, decrease uh, will be below 10 Celsius decrease, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's fresh. <laughs> really fresh in Athens. Okay, Hervé, let's give it a try again. We still don't hear you. I think, I think you have to leave the room and then come back into the room um, to fix the sound. Can you do that? Meanwhile, uh, I can report the weather here in Norway. So I'm actually up in the Arctic right now in Buda. It's a, it's a city called Buda. And as you can tell from behind, you see there's sunny. There is not a cloud uh, on the sky. And we have a, well, a minus four degrees Celsius, but a bit of wind, which is usual here. So it's freezing. It's colder. It feels colder. Anyways. Um, Agwe will we'll come back. Um, meanwhile, uh, you can, I don't know if you notice where you could um, say hello. I will, uh, or, and, and let us know where you are from and what the weather is like um, in the chat to the right side of the screen. Agwe, hello. Let's see. Ah, yes. Good. So finally, the weather report from Paris. Say that it's cloudy, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> Okay, that's all we needed to know. Okay, folks, we have a program today. Uh, you will learn more about next year. Um, we, you will know the status and what is new, uh, some, something is new, and, um, and how you can engage with us, how you can use next year. There's a lot of resources funded by the Commission 
European Commission, but also will be continued to be supported by several of the partners of next year. So we are here to stay. Uh, we start with uh, Sentinel data. Uh, we have a Sentinel linker. So I know that several of you are interested in using our observations, obviously. And the Sentinel data is of great interest to many. Anastis will introduce us to the Sentinel linker. Then you will learn more about the platform itself, the next year's platform, and the many different services we have there. And Hervé will give that uh, presentation for you. And then we also have another uh, deep dive into one of the services, the user feedback um, service, which is not only on NextGL's platform, but around and about in several places. So and for that reason, it's especially interesting. And last but not least, we will learn about the data cataloging possibility on the Data Hub from Nuno. Um, and uh, there are many ways that you, so you see there are many ways you can use uh, NextGL's. I will be saying a little bit about what we can offer in terms of uh, um, capacity development and learning from, from the NextGeos um, platform. So, hello. Yeah, thank you for, for um, communicating with us, people. <laughs> we are communicating only on these online uh, screens now. So it's good to hear from you. Hello, Marion, Joao, uh, Joan, Anna. Very nice to see you here. Okay. I think we start. Uh, Anestis, let us hear about the Sentinel Linker. Yes, we turn off your cameras and microphones while Anestis can, is. Can, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Good. Uh, let me. Okay. Uh, so today, uh, as Bente uh, just mentioned, uh, um, my presentation is on a service uh, developed during the course of uh, next years uh, from our institution. Uh, the service actually aims uh, to provide access to Sentinel data from different uh, federated uh, data hubs. So, um, um, uh, so what it is all about? Uh, as uh, Bente said, uh, the service is called Sentinel Linker Service, uh, uh, came, which came as a solution uh, in response to the fragmented uh, ecosystem of Sentinel data access points. What the service provides um, uh, uh, is the provision of satellite data from different hubs instead of one hub. Uh, on the left, you can see how Sentinel data are retrieved from one hub, and on the right, how users and developers can link the several hubs through a new layer that it is providing the very same interfaces, so uh, open search API and all data um, protocols that uh, the current hubs uh, are providing. Therefore, uh, what this service aims at is to respond on the current fragmentation on the Sentinel data access points and specifically the core hubs uh, such as SciHub, APIHub uh, and the 23 available national collaborative ground segments and in addition, each hub uh, has a, a different data offer covering the, the availability of different missions and different products per sensor. For instance, there are more than 20 satellite products for Sentinel-5B. Uh, the geographical coverage uh, within uh, which Sentinel products are available, for example, for the national um, uh, uh, collaborative ground segment in here in Greece that it is operated by us. It provides only data for the South East Europe, uh, Middle East and North Africa. So we are covering a specific bounding box. Uh, the maximum concurrent uh, downloads that uh, each hub is allowed to, to for the users. Uh, uh, the data rolling policies. Uh, so even SciHub has adopted a rolling policy uh, for the different data products, implementing online and offline products, as, as you may be aware of. Uh, and last, serve different user types. For instance, International Hub is only providing access to specific uh, stakeholders like NASA, uh, USGS, and etc. Uh, one last point is that each hub has different performances based on our experience uh, on operating six, six important uh, Sentinel hubs, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, um, 
seen that uh, consider, considerable per, per performance fluctuation, uh, fluctuation have, have been noticed. So with respect to download speed, integrity, a number of published products, response times of, uh, of the hubs and availability uh, as long as uh, the product uh, latency. In addition, we have seen that they, even uh, for the same, for the very same hub, we have um, uh, seen uh, intraday and intra product uh, variability in terms of uh, the above mentioned uh, indicators. Uh, so, um, uh, the solution developed uh, uh, can uh, can be made uh, uh, can made available freely and uh, will have the role to enhance uh, the next year's data hubs offerings and therefore provide uh, to users the, and pilots with access to the actual data. And this means uh, no broken links. Uh, so on the left hand side, you can see the architecture that uh, we have developed and the enhancement of the database provided by the data hub software instance. These enhancements are mainly to run the data hubs in case they are providing the very same product. Uh, the main specification of the services uh, are the implementation of the broker uh, mechanism within ESA's uh, Data Hub software uh, that works by overriding the standard pro uh, product synchronization and eviction policies and eviction return, sorry. Uh, the service uh, every couple of minutes uh, synchronize uh, the latest product uh, 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 in terms of metadata as well as the new evicted products from the enlisted data hub services and updates its uh, products availability. Uh, uh, every eight hours, uh, a new K performance indicators are produced for its data hub in, in order to rank, uh, uh, to, to, to create the ranking process uh, for the different hubs that are offering the, same, the very same product. Uh, and uh, finally, the products are, uh, Availability lists uh, appears uh, sorted using uh, the performance meetings that uh, uh, we have uh, mentioned. Um, so currently, the service synchronizes uh, with eight hubs that are listed uh, on the on the screen. Um, inevitably, the solution is not perfect. Uh, it has some strong and weak points. The good ones are the, that the service links federated Copernicus Sentinel hubs provides access to a, sen a single hub instead of looking across several Sentinel hubs to find the appropriate products for user's application, uh, provides access to all Sentinel missions with no geographic restrictions, and assures better timeliness and reduced lead times for accessing Sentinel products. And this is a strong point uh, for applications that need to have near real-time access to newly derived products. Uh, and on the weak side, uh, there is a limitation that only data hubs uh, that are using the data hub software can be synchronized. Uh, and due to the huge um, number of products on, on Sci-Hub and Hub, there is a delay on, on synchronizing uh, uh, products. Uh, and, and this is my last slide. Uh, I don't know what to bother you with uh, any technicalities. I just wanted to show you how uh, could be a response for a specific product. So we can see as a response uh, that the very same product is being provided by four different hubs. Uh, then the user can use the source of his preference, providing the credentials for the specified hub uh, on the on the pop-up uh, dialog uh, that uh, uh, it will uh, show up. So that is that is all from from my end. If you have any any question, please post it uh, in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anestis. And as you can, uh, as you may have noticed, I see several of you have noticed we are doing some uh, very easy polls. Um, I will read the result now. 54% uh, of you are actually using Sentinel data all the time. And, but we also have some newbies, 27% um, are newbies. And we also have somebody, 18% of you are looking to start to use Sentinel data. Thank you so much for, for answering the polls. We do this uh, for fun and also for useful information, of course. Um, Anestis, um, is there anywhere in particular they can uh, learn more about exactly your uh, Sentinel service? Is that somewhere you want to direct people? Um, uh, actually, uh, the service is um, 
up and running. Uh, it is hosted uh, uh, in our uh, infrastructure here, uh, and uh, uh, the presentation will pro can provide links to to this service for for the participants to to start playing with uh, 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 with accessing uh, Sentinel data through this um, federated uh, solution. Excellent. So I have provided the uh, the link to the next year's website for your convenience in the in the sticky note there, so you can go and explore more more of what you are going to hear. So I I don't know if I said that, but we are going to these presentations are very short and sweet, so that you get a taste of it, and then you can go ahead and and explore on our website later. And by all means, ask questions, and we can invite you in here in the room after the end of all the presentations. We are able to ask you to go come into the room as well. So we are uh, going to continue. Um, now you heard about one service. Uh, let's hear about the whole package, uh, Hervé. Sure. Are you ready? Yes, yes I am. All right. So, um, yes, uh, this is a, a short introduction about the, the full range of uh, the Nexus platform services as an offer. And uh, so in, in, in context, these uh, Nexus platform services uh, are built on uh, top of three pillars. So we have the European Data Hub as, uh, as built by Nexus, which connects to a lot of data sources. And as this just presented one of the technical strategies that we rely on in Nexus to access, uh, for instance, Sentinel data. And uh, during the project, but still now and then for the coming uh, years uh, through our uh, collaboration with GEO, uh, we, we onboard uh, your pilot applications. So you have an idea of a uh, EO data processing application, so Nexus can help you and you become an application builder uh, using the platform services. So that's the context for, uh, for, uh, for this set of uh, platform services aimed at application builders. Later on, after me, you will see also some uh, uses of the of the Nexus data hub uh, and of the catalog for uh, enriching or sharing your own resources and uh, the, the main uh, context for uh, the use of Nexus uh, platform services is to support uh, uh, activities uh, for uh, these three uh, main uh, agenda of uh, uh, on which geo is collaborating the UN uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the Paris Climate Agreement, and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. So as an application builder, you have a, a typical uh, situation, like I am uh, using Earth observation data to prototype my application. So is there an easy way for me to feed data for processing? Are there any tools to integrate my application in the cloud for cloud computing? And how can I run and monitor my application in production? So th these are the main uh, questions that uh, Nexus uh, uh, is answering by providing platform services to uh, application integrators. So on the platform, we are connected through uh, application programming interfaces, APIs, to a range of uh, web services. And uh, through our added value, th these are becoming uh, so-called platform services. So you have two main categories, platform services uh, on top of data providers and uh, the ones on top of cloud providers. And with those, uh, with this set of platform services, um, uh, you, you can uh, build new services based on your data. So data cataloging, service cataloging, data discovery, and then cloud integration and cloud bursting. I will I will detail the content of this. Alaïs after me will present the geospatial user feedback, uh, and I will give a word about operations analytics and dashboards and the user management. Uh, so the concept of operation when when you start with uh, NextGeos is that you you come as a partner and you have this uh, ID for uh, creating building a, a new application. So we onboard you and provide you access with the NextGeos platform services as web services, uh, exposing APIs, and through our uh, software development kit, uh, you, you as a developer uh, start to connect to these services like uh, the catalog from the Nexus Data Hub to search, find data, and then the cloud integration service to uh, package your application so that it can be portable. 
So that's the the main scope of these two platform services here highlighted, the cloud integration service and the cloud bursting. They support you to uh, make your uh, software application uh, natively cloud ready so that uh, you, we, you are supported for uh, strategies, for uh, data production strategies on the cloud. For this, uh, the DevOps team at the Hardway uh, will help you to uh, make sure that uh, every step, technical step, is uh, is well implemented for you, and will deploy via the cloud bursting your application on a selected cloud provider. You see here on the left the range of cloud providers that we are able to speak to uh, through APIs. So after that, your application lives on the data center. Your that EU data processing application lives on the data center and is the, is ready to discuss via interoper interoperability protocol that we have provided to you uh, via the, the cloud integration service, able to speak with all the other uh, platform services of Nexgeos. So you have a rich application which can embed uh, data processing, of course, EU data processing, but also uh, connecting that application to your community portal and handle the user management in an integrated way with Nexgeos and have access to uh, analytic dashboards about the behavior of your uh, application. So at the end of the day, you as a partner and the, the whole set of partners expose are exposing their uh, applications as cloud-based uh, applications and uh, rich cloud-based applications and rich with a lot of uh, uh, features and functionalities uh, that initially you are not necessarily an expert with. And uh, when this is done, you have uh, performed the full cycle. Uh, you are delivering your application to your user community. Um, most most of the time through your own uh, community portal, but uh, enriched with EU data processing on the cloud, user management, user feedback, and uh, dashboard uh, for uh, analytics on your uh, service usage. So for the cloud integration and cloud bursting, that's uh, a service on Nexgeos delivered and operated by Terraduay. Uh, it's a set of solutions, the, the Ellipse solutions, and uh, they provide you with the integration environment for testing and validating your uh, EO data processing component. You can bring existing algorithm in nearly any language that will be embedded and, and wrapped with our uh, APIs. Uh, so that they are uh, made interoperable for Nexgeos. And then you will uh, benefit from automated build and packaging on the platform. Uh, so you can release your, uh, your application as a cloud appliance. And this time, uh, this application package can be burst on a selected cloud provider. Uh, again, you see the, the list uh, on the top uh, right this time. Uh, Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, the European uh, DIAS, like SoBlue, Creodia, Sonda, and some others, uh, and notably the European Grid Infrastructure, which is a federation of cloud providers in Europe. And so we have uh, the Nextgeos platform services offer for each services. So in a nutshell, you see the summary for the cloud integration service, a set of cloud sandboxes that can be woke up on the platform uh, where you can work, integrate and test, and then uh, use our application framework to uh, enrich your application with the Nexus platform services. The cloud bursting service where uh, you will uh, deploy uh, with our support uh, your, uh, your application, your packaged application. You can deploy multiple times. You can perform one-time deployments. You can perform uh, per, uh, deployments for a short time of uh, period where you just need to process uh, one month or one year of Sentinel data. So your service will be up on the cloud for the processing time. And then the, the results I made are shared on, on your selected uh, storage. And you can exploit this from your community portal permanently. Uh, the digital trust services, uh, user uh, authentication, authorization, and accounting. So you have a single sign-on uh, facility on Nexgeos that can be used uh, for controlling the access to your processing service, controlling the access to your community portal, and monitoring who is accessing uh, what uh, on your Nexgeos powered services. And finally, the analytics dashboard service, where uh, there are a set of uh, Features uh, presented in uh, graphical uh, dashboards are uh, monitoring the usage of your cloud computing service and um, 
uh, based on uh, on the uh, on the uh, information you can gain intelligence about the usage of your application and you can uh, which uh, some uh, improve readiness for uh, operational monitoring of uh, your uh, deployment. So in conclusion with NextGeos, you, you have a European contribution to GEOS for professional support to EU uh, value adders with uh, multi-cloud portability of applications and a large, potential large community outreach. So that's it for me. Thank you so much, Hervé. You make it sound so simple to use next year, <laughs> but <laughs> you you did uh, you do need to be somewhat an expert to fully exploit it. Uh, I have uh, done a poll again. Um, I will reveal the results immediately while you are thinking up questions to ask Hervé. I'm sure you have some questions. Um, do you develop uh, applications and services? So this is about if you are using not only Sentinel data, but definitely Sentinel data. And uh, 57 of you says, uh, percent say, yes, indeed. 14% um, is learning. Yes, I'm learning. 14% um, is also saying no, but they want to. So we have some interested in learning how to do this. And also somebody who is on the fence, 12% uh, is not quite sure. So uh, Hervé, um, I think while we are asking, let me see if I have some questions. No, I don't think. Don't be shy, ask questions. Uh, we will have a discussion afterwards as well, but if you have some immediate questions, you can do this now. Hervé, um, uh, so, so this platform, when you are setting up the, uh, the platform environment and so on, um, you do need to have uh, cloud services um, to do that, right, already. Before they deploy it in any cloud, you need some cloud services. How is that covered? Yeah, that, that's part of the philosophy uh, of Nexus to develop an offer and uh, provide services to the community without owning uh, each and every resource. So, as, as I mentioned, the use of APIs is, uh, is key in, in Nexus, so we can aggregate and build on top of uh, the shoulders of giants. And so uh, for the cloud computing, that's the case. We, we, we use external cloud providers as partners. We connect to their uh, data centers via APIs. So this is done from Teradway Cloud Platform. And our job is to make sure that we are every day up to date with these uh, API standards, that uh, they are operational. So we maintain this, we evolve this, so that the quality of service is guaranteed when you need to uh, run something on the, on the selected cloud. By the way, if you already have credits on Amazon, if you have already credits on a, on a, on a DIAS, on a European DIAS, uh, then uh, you 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 will preferably connect to that uh, cloud provider you are already working with, and and we will comply to this. Yes, and uh, I also think it's worth mentioning that we have some cloud providers um, promising to to support next years also beyond the project period. I'm thinking of uh, EGI and uh, Cessnet. Is that correct? I think Sai is here. Yeah. Yeah, because because we have spent four years as a as an EC funded project, mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, an embedded partner cloud provider uh, with EGI, but also the the diases uh, were part of the picture from the start. But during the project, we have also worked with Amazon as a proof of concept, mm -hmm. and uh, Etner, which is another European provider. And now that the project itself uh, is ended, we are uh, organizing ourselves for new funding. This will be a next talk uh, coming soon. Uh, and yes, we have some pledge from uh, EGI in particular. And of course, the Coper Copernicus dias are, uh, are also part of the picture because th there are vehicles for you to get funded. And, and so you don't necessarily have to spend your own money as a, as a user to make use of a cloud uh, provider or even Nexio. So we'll discuss the opportunities and whether they are new projects or uh, sponsorship vehicles. There are a lot of, uh, or if you are rich, you can come to us also. Uh, we can do business. 
Yes, absolutely. So there are, and we will come back to that at the end of the of the webinar. How the many different ways that, that you can engage with next years to make sure that you can use the resources. There, there are many ways of doing that. Uh, Florian, I have a question from you um, that I want to ask immediately. How do you see the services help the geo work program activities? Thank you for that, Florian. Um, we do have a. Um, uh, a community activity called Next EOS, and we have a meeting next week. I will provide more information about that also in the chat. But that's uh, definitely, um, we are offering Next EOS uh, resources to uh, help faster uptake of Earth observations across the whole uh, work program, actually, Florian. Um, so the resources are available to the entire GEO work program community. Uh, I don't know if anyone want to add something to my my answer there. Uh, Nuno, maybe you want to add something? Yes. Uh, so one one of the 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 things that we had in, in next year was that we had a set of pilots uh, that uh, test, uh, tested the, the whole platform and uh, and uh, data cap data hub. So these pilots typically uh, are uh, geo related pilots. Well, they're all connected to to geo activities, whether in uh, renewable energies or in uh, air pollution areas. So these are already using the the next use uh, um, resources. And you can yes. go to nextgeos.eu and see uh, the different topics uh, related to geo that have been addressed with us, like uh, Nuno was uh, citing. You have the full list on the nextgeos.eu website. Yes. I'll show it later and on in my presentation. Yes, yes, you will learn more about it. And, and of course, uh, eShape, in eShape, uh, it's a EuroGeo, EuroGeo being a, um, a regional caucasus of geo. They are offering a lot of pilots. 20 more than 27 now uh, i don't know exactly the number uh, anymore but quite a few of the pilots and some of them will be using are using the next year services and we will continue to help um anybody interested in in the work program so we, we and we can come back to this uh, later florian and perhaps even invite you in here if you have a chrome a browser and a webcam and a headset uh, I think we can move on now um, to um, uh, to learn about uh, yet another service um, that is of interest across several platforms, but definitely here available here on uh, next year's Alight. Let's hear about the user feedback. Thank you very much, Mente. I'm Alight Zavala, and I'm from Autonomous University of Barcelona. And let me switch off my camera and share my screen in order to. So to explain to you uh, this user feedback service that we have developed in NextGeos, and not only that, but I also will explain a little bit how we can use it, feed this feedback into uh, creating some knowledge. So, so first of all, you are not you, you turned yeah. off. Sorry you for that. Turned off your screen share. <laughs> now it's here. Very easy. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I changed. I, I yeah. yeah. Oh, it's okay. So now, um, as I said, uh, oh, again, the button is not doing what I expected. Sorry for that. <laughs> it's okay. Now we are here. Yes. So first of all, uh, a short explanation about what user feedback is. Uh, general user feedback would be any valid, val um, any comment or any uh, feedback about a certain resource that, resource that someone gives. For example, general Amazon reviews are user feedback, but we are talking about geospatial resources. So then we should think about specific standards for um, dealing with this user feedback. And this is where we get to OGC geospatial user feedback, which is a standard uh, containing a specific fields for feedback, but they are related to geospatial data and also geospatial services. So this user feedback allows us to contribute information about significant events that you can see, for example, in the Sentinel-2 images, but also to explain the use that you have done with those images, if you find out some problems, if you have developed publications, or if you get more information about lineage or about general quality of those images or general resources or services. So uh, um, 
item in the year spatial user feedback system can contain several elements that you can see here in the right side but how we connect or how we get this information imagine you have a certain data set for example a sentinel image and you have you can have this image in several uh, re resources or several catalogs for example of course starting in an next use catalog that you have heard already about it uh, but also some other platforms so echo potential web browser or any other portals that can have these uh, resources uh, in in their uh, context in these portals and then any of them can connect to the nimbus system so it's the system um, storing this user feedback and always there's one user that needs to sing the, to sign in and this user will be the one creating this uh, this feedback item explaining uh, his or her experience over this data set and for example as i said uh, she can uh, give some information about a certain general comment or a rating about this data set, but she also can even explain something more complex, such as what she has done with this data set and which several processes she has done and which is the final product she has produced. Uh, the link of a certain publication explaining this process or explaining quality assessment or any other information can be also linked in these uh, user feedback items. And also, as I explained, some additional quality reportings could be defined in these user feedback items. So all this information is helping us to build the, the knowledge hub, or it's, it's helping us somehow in building this knowledge or not. Well, in order to answer this question, uh, we can see this document that it's uh, the design and proof of concept for the GEO Knowledge Hub that GEO uh, developed uh, a couple of years ago, not, not yet. And in that document, they uh, re recognize that there are several knowledge resource types. On one side, you could have publications or you could also have software code models and tools. You can have different kinds of data, so remote sensing in situ or even output and data products or videos and some other materials. What, uh, which of those elements could be described in user feedback? We are not that bad. Most of them can be already, could be in fact already uh, described in the original OGC standard. So the ones in, in green color here, all of them could be, uh, are already uh, there. And not only those, also this orange element that was not there at the beginning is now in our extended uh, Nimbus service because we have an extended OGC standard in order to allow this information to be shared as well. And this is the one that can be more interesting for you right now as a users or as a data providers because this uh, ability of uh, encoding reproducible usage allows you, for example, to provide a web map. This is the case of the Echo Potential web map browser where uh, the browser gives analytical tools to the user so uh, the user can work with these images and for example can produce a new rgb combination or can produce a new index so for example the normalized porn ratio or can produce more complex um, elements coming out of these <clears throat> images and all this information about what has been done can be stored in nimbus because the nimbus this reproducible usage new element allows you to explain what you have done so which is the code for example in this case a json code defining the operation you have done and in which is the formats of this code that is being stored but you can also explain where you know in which platform this code should be applied in order to get your result and if you have a certain version of a schema of that platform and of course finally about what so which is the resource you no know, the data set in this case the sentinel image that you should should use in order to get the same results so with all this information stored in nimbus any user can define a certain um uh, new element to be created for example a new data set or a new um product to be created and anyone else uh, can reproduce that and can get the same result by applying this code to the certain platform and so on. So now what else? No, our ideas uh, coming now uh, are mainly in order to extend even more this uh, Nimbus system allowing you to include in the user feedback uh, more information such as reporting on geospatial individual geospatial features also we want to work on a quality extension to be able to better capture or to better define new quality measurements about a certain product or a certain resource we also would like to give uh, support to questionnaires because these questionnaires are a 
a common tool for data producers to engage with their users and to listen to their problems, their needs, and so on. And we would like to link this more formal user feedback um, tool to this general uh, user feedback uh, Nimbus system that we have. Uh, we will also, of course, uh, continue engaging with everyone. So as uh, Bente said already, Nixios is here to stay, Nimbus is here to stay, and we would like to talk to you uh, as a producer or as a user and help you uh, in uh, combining or in uh, including user feedback in your systems. And of course, we also would like to uh, develop the system further in the directions that you need. So please let us know. Please give us your feedback and explain to us uh, what would be interesting for you to see and to be able to uh, capture in user feedback and we will give it a try and we will try to answer that and for everyone we will keep uh, on training uh, on training uh, as we are doing today and we will also want to give our extensions and start the uh, standardization of those extensions in the OGC uh, not only for the knowledge extensions that I explained today but also for the goof API that we have developed so that's everything from my side and please any feedback any comments uh, we uh, uh, please uh, post them in the chat and i will try to answer thank you so much Alight. um it's the user feedback um yes are you coming back on um, yes i am um, here uh, and here and he yes yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um so do you have questions for Alight? Uh, go ahead and ask in the chat. Meanwhile, I want to ask you, uh, Alight, how long have you been working on the user feedback? Ooh. Service? <laughs> uh, well, it's not only me working in user feedback. I started yeah. with Nexius, uh, so almost four years ago now. Um, but also uh, my colleagues, uh, Joan Mazo from Crev, he was working on OGC, uh, on the user feedback before, and in fact, uh, was the developer of this standard. So I don't know, I would say it has an e a history, in fact. No, we have we started working in user feedback as a uh, tentative new standard since GeoEqua, that was a, an a FP7 project in uh, 2012 starting, I think. So yeah, quite a lot. And Nimbus in yeah. the system you are seeing now, not that much, I would say five years or six, but in the user feedback, in the general concept uh, point of view, let's say like metadata and so on, even farther than that. Exactly. Uh, I knew that, of course, but I wanted people to really know that this is something that has been around for a very long time and it's constantly improving. And you heard Alight inviting you to give further feedback yes, to please. the feedback service. <laughs> so, uh, and, and definitely it has uh, developed into a very, very powerful tool. And we are uh, offering it on next years, but you said you can also implement it in any other platform, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Yes. So this is the strength of this service in my view, because you get collectively um, a lot of feedback on uh, your data and service, both as a user and as a provider. And now that brings me to the little poll I pulled on you. <laughs> um, I asked if you are interested in user feedback and um, you answered as follows, 11% are interested as a data or service provider, 22 as data and service user are interested. And as I suspected, most of you are interested in both, as both as a data provider and as a data user, 44% actually, and 22% are not sure. So um, I know this from, from uh, our discussions in GEO, oftentimes we are talking about, you know, the users, the users, and we need to reach the users, but very often the user, the providers are also users. So thank you for um, um, answering our poll to um, Alight. So last but not least, I don't see any questions yet, Alight, maybe at the end. Last but not least, um, Nuno, we are going to hear about the catalog. Yes. Yes. So hello again, everyone. Um... Uh, what five minutes yes <laughs> uh so um so as as you know my name is uh, nuno catarino i'll, I'll uh, 
start sharing the screen. Here it is. So um, I'm uh, uh, I'm head of data systems at uh, at Bemos. So Bemos works in, in in the space sector and uh, a lot in in creating an Earth observation market as uh, as we we're doing in in next year's or the next year's and the follow up. So I'll, I'll be talking about the next year's catalog, uh, which is online. You can can go to the catalog.nextyears.eu. So the, the and you see the front end for the catalog. So the the, the catalog is a, is a a free tool. So the, that was uh, one of the main goals of the of the next year's project was to create a European hub for uh, for data and be extended also for for services. So the catalog is online. You can um, do the usual things that you do with a, with a, with a catalog front end. You can draw rectangles, draw polygon input coordinates, uh, start and end dates, uh, data acquisition types, um, and uh, data collections. You have a lot of the data collections that you can 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 filter your search uh, from then you uh, select your area you do the search i won't go into live demos because they always go wrong so i've already uh, had the previous search that i did so this is what you get so you get um a link to to the product with the metadata included and you can uh, access the description of the product the the, the region and you can download the the resources they are not uh, stored by next year so you're redirected to the original download uh, sites from the data providers and we have both the um, data the sentinel data linking service for sentinel data and uh, that uh, you saw Ness uh, talk about and also uh, a data consistency check that ensures that the product that you are accessing that they are indeed uh, working and here you have the link to the user feedback as you saw the uh, allies explain now so here you can uh, you can provide feedback on the data sets themselves uh, finally you have you you can also recover the the, the open search um, uh, query results uh, from uh, from next years and this is basically what you get so you get the results in open search api so you get the the full list of the of the query results in open search api so we can you can integrate it in your own application another thing that another way that you can uh, search um, for for data in next years is to data providers so one of the things that we were uh, requested to do is to provide visibility to the data providers so many of the data providers or most of the data providers are actually institutional and um so the the the, uh, the the recognition, the public recognition of their work is quite important for them, um, and so we have this this particular uh, page where we have all the, the data providers, and you can select data through data pro providers. So you can see the you have a lot of uh, data sets from each data provider. You can go there and uh, uh, reach the data from this particular data providers. We have public data, and we have, for example, in this case, this is a private data we have access to the demos imaging catalog but we also have a number of data sets that they've provided uh, within the project that are that are open and, and, and free to use um, then we have the um, data collections as well so I gave it here so we have the data collection so you can also browse by data collection um, so average CI Strift, uh, Probo V, uh, uh, Nilu data, data Archive and so on. So you have uh, also the possibility of going through the data collection itself and uh, going directly to your, to your, um, to your, to the data that, that you're, uh, that you need. The other thing that, that we have connected with, uh, with next year, so most of this you don't need login to, to use, or so all, all of what I've uh, just mentioned, it's completely open. You can just uh, uh, go there and access the data. But there are other things that you need login for. For example, one of the things is the support. So if you need particular support, uh, and so you need to do login. I, I'm already logged in, but you get a page like this. And our login system is, is um, was created uh, first of all for for next use in the beginning, but it's now a standalone uh, a standalone uh, system that or a standalone service that you can you can use. So you can you can connect with a number of uh, of um, login systems, or you can create your own here in, in next years. 
and then you you have access to the help center for example and here you have several requests that you can do and also you can uh, provide actually the data the the inputs in an anonymized way if you want or in a in a light way way if you want to give a short feedback you just uh, it's not anonymized but you have just name and email and you don't have to register so we've done the interface uh, we did the interface so that you only have to register if you really have to and if you really want to engage and you can access things uh, as as openly as possible so what do you need to, to register for? Um, ah, one thing I forgot to mention is that you can also search next use data through the, the GEOS portal. So next use is now one of the uh, backend catalogs used by the, the GEOS portal. So you have the whole uh, collections of data in the GEOS portal and you can do the other, the, the other way around as well. So if you go to the, to the next GEOS uh, front end, you also have, can search in geos as well so the two are completely uh, integrated um so you can you can also uh now one of the the, the offers that we do in next is that you can uh, provide your data or catalog your data in, in next years so here you can um, you can uh, click here in the catalog your data so you have two options for cataloging your data you either raise a ticket in the service desk request and then you're redirected to the service desk for raising that ticket. And then we uh, will contact you and we'll uh, work together uh, on the process to, to catalog the data. But another thing that we have now is, uh, and this is quite new, uh, so uh, if, if you see any, any bugs, please let us know. But you can build your own harvester. So basically, you're provided with with a, with a query with a list of uh, of questions uh, that are able to characterize your data and ideally do a, a, an automatic harvester so we can integrate it in the in the catalog so you can uh, directly uh, integrate your your data with the minimum uh, amount of um, of human interaction let's say from from our side we still have to check the harvester and we'll still have have a manual step that we have to do but it's a very lightweight one so it's only the verification so this is uh quite a new feature it was actually done in the, in the last few weeks um uh so it will uh, it will still evolve but uh, it's already already working so this is the other the other feature that you can use so you can do the building of your own har harvester and then uh, you can also catalog your application. So as, as I mentioned, we have a number of, of pilots in XGEOS. Uh, these were the pilots that were demonstrating, the, the, their use was to demonstrate the, the usefulness and the use of XGEOS. And um, they are all cataloged uh, here and we are cataloging more, more applications. So in this case, the process is, is through the service desk. So here you have, um, catalog uh you you can request support i believe to catalog your uh, your application little request catalog issue service catalog uh catalog your service in next years and uh we get so we get a, a, a ticket from from you and then we start interacting with you to do the integration of the method for your service the the, the endpoints of your service and what you what you get basically you get uh, um uh, 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 linked to the next years you can be accessed like for example here the the energy service from um from admin you have access to both uh, their services actually comes radiation and uh, uh, previous data um, and you uh, you have all the, the data collections linked and all the, the the resources linked here finally one of the things that um, so yeah this is the their uh, service uh, uh, um, front end so one of the things that we are also bringing in close connection to the next year so this is uh, ongoing now separate from the project itself but it's a, a platform that we're doing in an ESA project with, uh, with the European Space Agency and Space Chain which is uh, the store for EO uh, which is a, a e-commerce platform for micro geo services so the goal here is to have 
very small, uh, out, fully automated services. You can have more information here in this, uh, in this video, very small services that will be cataloged in next years, and then people can access them automatically here. So these services have to be very small microservices, like calculating indexes and things like that, but can be, uh, can be um, Im implemented uh, and ac accessed fully automated. So the user uh, won't have to wait, won't have to, to, to contact anyone and, um, and will have access to this. So uh, this is, uh, as I said, a project is uh, started in the, in the next, in the last few months. Uh, and it's, it's, it's ongoing with ESA. So we, um, if, if you have any interest in that, please let us know that we can start uh, talking to integrate the services here. The service will be uh, open by the end of this year, um, later this year. Okay, and I think this is uh, ah, the the store for you will be for commercial and non-commercial services, and will be linked to ESA's uh, network of resources in in the end. Um, so I believe this is this wraps up the the whole offer that we have. So please use it, uh, test us, uh, and and uh, um, use the resources that you have available from this uh, from this project, because uh, um, as Ben says, uh, we are here to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nuno. Um, so just to clarify, so what you say is that if people are uh, cataloging their microservices on the next GS catalog, you will actually also uh, reach another marketplace, not only the next GS catalog marketplace, but also this ESA page that you are building up, right? Yes. So there are two ways of uh, of uh, cataloging the services in, in next years. One of them is to catalog the services as we have the pilots. The pilots are quite quite complex services; they're not microservices. Um, so you you will have access to the uh, to the pilots access uh, to the pilots assets uh, resources online through the next years pages. But if you have a microservice that can be run automatically, yes, then you can link it to the store for you, and you can uh, you can run it automatically. The processes are still being uh, being developed. We're going to develop the processes also with uh, with the service providers. Um, and for example, we're discussing with Teradwis many of the services that that we have already uh, worked with them in, in next years as well. Uh, but um, uh, but we want to uh, access uh, other services and as many services as possible so that the users can look for the data in the next year's catalog, but also look for services and microservices. Yes, yes. So, uh, so as if you have a microservice uh, and you want to have a, you know, uh, save time <laughs> and money that you, you, if you catalog it on next years, you will actually automatically be going to this other place as well. To no, you have to, to we have to, to discuss it, you have to agree to cataloging it. We're not cataloging it automatically. We no, catalog no, no, it no. if the user okay. wants yeah. us to catalog, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, but auto, you, they don't have to do any extra work if they want to do it. Yeah. You can do it on Nextios, yeah, and um, you that will be sort of a service on the Nextios. Exactly, comes. exactly. Yes. So, um, and uh, I, I think let's see if I have a, uh, a question. You saw the website. You have the link to the website. You can go and explore. Um, and uh, there are, and uh, Nuno showed you so many ways to reach out to us. Um, we have an automatic system, but I also want to ask all of you presenters to provide your email in the chat box in case people want to reach you directly, if you don't mind. Um, the more, the more, the more ways we can be reached, the merrier. <laughs> we want to be approachable. Um, yes, that's a very important point because um, uh, typically people are not, they, they don't provide feedback very easily. So I'd like to motivate people to please use all the mechanisms that you have on the page or emails to provide the feedback because the more feedback you provide, the better we can uh, improve the services and then the better we can serve you. So feel free to make uh, as many comments, even negative if you, if you want, uh, as possible. Okay. Yes. Absolutely, and I did. Uh, I did a poll while you were presenting as well, Nuno. Of course, and I ask simply: Are you interested in cataloging your data or your service or your application? I hope that was implicit in my question. And half of you uh, want to uh, 
uh, make your data and services easy to discover. None of you feel obligated by legal agreements. I'm not sure if you're aware that you, <laughs> some of the contracts with the Commission uh, oblige you to make your data uh, available, but um, anyways. Um, and 25% uh, says yes, but I don't know how or where yet. And I hope we have answered some of the questions for you. And 20%, they are not sure. You are not sure. So um, I hope that you got something valuable and some good tips here um, in this um, in this pre uh, in this webinar. Let's see. Uh, if I, uh, uh, thank you, Sai. Um, he, he has to to run. Sai Holsinger from EGI. Uh, Tamar, thank you for for providing your email um, because you. Uh, I know Tamar, you are a part of the next EOS community in uh, activity in Geo, and we will talk about that shortly. Um, I want to also um, invite you to follow next geos webinar series so next now you heard a lot about the different different types of services and offers that we have we also have something on capacity building one of the things that we are doing for free is this webinar series and i will show you where you can subscribe if you're not already subscribing to the next geos webinar series you are more than welcome to do so not only that but we would like to hear from you about topics that you are interested in. We will uh, gladly organize webinars addressing exactly what you are interested in. It could be di deep diving into a very technical problem. It could be engaging. You want to address an issue that your end users are having and you want to highlight some of the issues and some of the solutions. We can do that in the next year's webinar series. So please subscribe and contact me if you want to uh, suggest any topics or have some ideas on what, what next. Um, we all also have already produced an enormous amount of webinars and short and longer um, trainings and introductions um, addressing these earth observation communities issues already you can follow us on the youtube channel next geos simply search for next geos on on youtube and you will find us easily there are uh, i think we have more than 100 videos and many of them are about earth observations and how you can use our resources so uh, I just, uh, do you want to add something, uh, Anastis, Alites, Nuno, Hervé? Not from my side, thank you. No. Yeah, just uh, keep healthy. Yeah, <laughs> keep healthy, yeah. Yeah, eventually we will all meet again. Yeah. Uh, um, Hervé, were you trying to say something? Oh, just saying uh, thank you again, uh, Bente. For the yeah. 100th time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So let me just, uh, I, I think it's not so necessarily so easy to find. Unfortunately, I don't have a direct link. So I want to share with you the screen. You see now uh, my screen, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, if you want to see here is the webinar series in the banner, you click on, oh, well, I was too slow. Let's see, we have a banner here on top and next year's webinar series, you click on that and that's the form you get and where you can sign up for the webinar series. And um, so I just wanted to show you where to get that. And I also promised you to show you and to talk about the next EOS community activities and you see also that on the front page of the next geos webinar uh, sorry the next geos.eu web page we have here a link where you can read more about next eos and you have we have listed when we have the, the meetings uh, some of them you see the contact persons here and if you click on the links so we are clickable links on the names you will get our email addresses you see the program, the next one is already next week on Thursday, and uh, you are more than welcome to join us. 
that you can subscribe and become a part of the next EOS uh, community activity by just clicking on, uh, click here to subscribe and you get on the list and so that we can communicate you, with you the different activities that we are doing. So uh, Tamer, um, I mentioned Tamer here, you, he's in, in the webinar, he is uh, one of the members uh, active in both disaster as a thematic topic and also on capacity building. And so you can also do this. Let me see, did I, did it everything freeze? No. Um, so that's, um, that's that. Uh, any other questions? No, looks like everybody's happy. We are just five minutes over the hour, perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, we will be uh, having a webinar next month. Monthly webinars is our plan, but we can do more. So subscribe. OK, until the next time. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.